Okay, I'm getting a, a lot of people asking about building a fake tech, which is basically a non ESP32 board in the same footprint as a Helltech V3. Um, the chip size is actually, the board size is actually exactly the same, but it's ultra low power consumption. So these things take like no power. So uh, you can build them for about 12 bucks, which is pretty unbelievable. You get a lot of your stuff from AliExpress and, and uh, they're pretty easy to build, but they're not for the faint of heart because as, actually, as you can see, I mean, this is the this is the size of the chips you're going to be putting on the boards. And uh, in relation to my finger, you can see, like, they're tiny. So um, you want to get yourself uh, boards made, fake tech boards. Uh, I use PCBWay. Um, there, there's a Gerber file, and I printed this right from the website. There's a Gerber file there. You upload that Gerber to PCBWay. It walks you through it, and bam, send it. And uh, next thing you know, you get the board back. I got a question on this board, though. They, they denied the board being made first because I had a problem. Um, turns out they asked about a pad being cut off. And as you can see here, and uh, right, try to do this. and See that pad there? It's cut. And then there's another pad that's cut there. Um, that actually uh, was throwing up an error code for them. So I said, yep, no problem. That's the way it's supposed to be. And uh, they sent them out. I got 50 boards for like 20 bucks, something like that. It wasn't much at all. So... Um, to assemble these is pretty easy, um, but it's a lot of soldering. It's, uh, you know, fine soldering. If you're good at that, that's great. But, uh, you know, I'm not too good. And I'm pretty shaky. Um, so what you're going to need first, I'm going to go through a parts list. You're going to need these boards. So you're going to need the, the fake tech boards printed, PCB Way or another company. Um, the screen is optional. It's just a standard OLED screen that you use for anything else. I paid $1.20 on AliExpress for this. You're going to need one of these two chips, the HA... RA62, that's a Helltech chip, chip uh, 22 dB, or an RA01SH-P, I'm not sure about. Um, I thought this was just, I thought they were all the same, but this one has a dash P. Well, I just realized that this is an actual chip that has a 29, D, or 20, yeah, 29 dB gain, and the HTRA62 has a 22 dB gain, so it's a more powerful chip. The chip that has the RA01SH without the P is 22 dB. So I don't know if that's going to make a difference or if I can even use it, but the pinouts are exactly the same, so I'm going to try it. As far as resistors go, you're going to need resistors to put on your board uh, to register, read your voltage. Um, you're going to need, I went through the, the Lupus Works, is the guy that actually uh, has a lot of the fake tech stuff online. I went through his instructional uh, videos and I used exactly what he has to the T even with the resistor code so you're going to have to get a 68k and a 1m resistor and the codes for that there's a four digit code or a three digit code depending on the manufacturer but like 6803 means it's a 68 kilo ohm resistor 1004 means it's a 1m I think it's a thousand or mega ohm I think is what that is or a number 764 chip um, that's how you come up with that um, you're going to get these in bags. They're going to come in a whole bag of chips. Um, get them on Amazon. And there you can see what I need. That's actually another version. Let me pull that out quick. But uh, Let me go back to this one. There's another bag. There's that 680K and that 1M. And there's a, a 12K for the board itself. Um, and I'll go through where they're actually supposed to be here later in the video. Um, but... There's also, you can actually change the values slightly. I didn't have the original values that he was asking for, but if you put these in a combination, the R1 and R2 in a combination of like one third, two third, um, it'll work no matter what the resistor size is from what I understand. Um, so GPS is optional optional as well. You can, uh, with the version four, the fake tech V4 that I uh, downloaded the Gerber file of, you can actually add GPS, add buzzers and everything else that comes with these devices. And there's two finished boards that I just... Uh, completed and totally done there um, but uh, what you're going to need to do and I'll kind of walk you through it really quick because like I say there's not a lot of good instructions on here um, to do this so first thing you need to do is get this pro micro nrf 52840 10 star makes these it's literally I paid two dollars and 25 cents a board on, on AliExpress you're going to have to put this board just like your flash firmware on Meshtastic you got to Go on uh, the website, and you got to flash a bootloader first, and then you can flash Mestastic on this. I flash these boards before I even put everything together. So it's all done, and uh, when I know, I know the board is working prior to even assembling everything. 
So you're gonna to have to flash that first. That's your first step. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take one of your fake tech boards, which is here. I apologize, I don't have a tripod or anything. Um, but the first thing I do is I solder the actual chip on the board, just like that. So then the chip will be on that board. I'm gonna try plate soldering or hot, I guess some people call it like it's hot air and there's hot plate. I'm gonna try hot plate soldering later to see if it's a lot easier. But that's where that chip is gonna go. It lines up. There's a little tiny hole here. Actually, I actually had it wrong. Um, a little tiny hole here near where your antenna SMA is or your IPX connection. It sits right on there. It's actually not too bad to solder. I did a couple of them, not too bad at all. So you put your chip on first. Then you're gonna to wanna to put your two buttons on. Your two buttons will be here. So there's gonna be a button that goes right across here. And it actually shows a little spot there. You can see a little hole. That's where the buttons go. So a button's gonna go one here and one here. All right, so solder them buttons on. So you got your chip on, you got your button on. That's all you need to do on this side. Nothing bad, all right? So uh, that's the first step. Then you're gonna to wanna to solder all these pins through your NRF board, with the exception of that, we don't need that one, but those things, you wanna solder them all the way through, um, pretty easy to do. And then also remember, if you're charging bigger batteries, there's a pad here, which is right here. You wanna put a blob of solder across there and short those pads out, because that'll enable the faster charging. It's like one milliamp charging if you don't blob that out, but if you blob it out, then it's two, and it's a 300 milliamp. Um, so it's triple the speed to charge a battery then. Um, so uh, that's how that uh, that works there. So you get to that point, then you get your board. Your board will be soldered on just like that. And it's going to look like this. So we have your pins across it. And that's soldered to your board. And you can see that little blob of solder down that hole there. You can still get to it if you forget it, but I put a blob of solder down through that hole because I did forget it. There's a big shock there. So... Now that you have that part assembled, we go to the back side of the board. This is where it gets into the trickiness. This is hard to solder because it's so small. So these tiny MOSFETs, and you can look at my solder, it looks like shit, guys, but I'm, I guess I'm not a pro with this, but it works, so I'm not, that's all I care about. So you go into this, there's your MOSFETs and there's your resistors. There's different ways you can go this, different size resistors. These are the resistors that I work and, they, and everything is working, so you can use the same thing that I used. But on the back side here, where you're gonna wanna start is R1 and R2. R1 and R2, that actually is uh, the resistors you put in there to measure your battery voltage. So on the left-hand side, R1, you want to use a 68K resistor. The right side, you want to use a 1M resistor. And there's the code. See that 1004 on the right? And 6803, I guess it is on the, on the left. Um, that's uh, the resistors that you put in there. So they're pretty easy to solder and blob in by hand, not a problem. Then the tricky part is, like I said, you get into these. So I use these 1002. Resistors are 12K resistors, three of them, and they go across here. One, two, three. They get soldered to the board. And you can see, guys, it's freaking tiny. There's the pads without them on it. So you are taking these uh, little MOSFETs and such, dropping them on there. And then you got to, it, see, it sticks to the damn thing. Um, you want to spin them around and then solder them to your board, right? Little trick, just put one little dab of solder on your board first, right here with this pin. One dab of solder there on each one of your, your blobs. Put one dab there and then solder one point and then go back and solder the other side and it works pretty well. Same with these. When you put these little resistors on, these 12K resistors, when they go in there, God, it's so small. When they go on there like that, um, one side at a time, Just put a blob on one side. Even static electricity picks these up. I mean, they are freaking tiny. Look at them compared to my finger. Um, so those go on there next. And the good thing is, if you want to keep this simple and you don't, you're not going to use GPS, you're not going to use a screen 
Well, a screen would still work, but you're not gonna use GPS. All you really need to do is put in these resistors here, your buttons on the other side. So those resistors, button here, button here, resistors on the other side, solder your board on, and you're done. You don't need to go with these small pieces. You don't need to go with all the, the MOSFETs and all that at all. Um, the MOSFET size, by the way, is S12312. Um, and they come in a bag. And there's a part number, AliExpress. And there's links on the on the Fake Tech website. There's 200 of them I got for like, I don't know, four bucks, two bucks. It wasn't much. Um, they're on a roll like this. Peel them off. Um, so I hope I answered some questions. Like I say, there's a lot to, to do here. But if you're just going to get really down and dirty and simple, get yourself some boards. You don't have to solder the MOSFETs in. You know, just keep it simple. If you're just using a, a plain old fake tech with nothing else on it, that's like this one. I don't even have, I don't have a screen on it, I don't have anything else, and you want to put a node out there. This this is literally like an eight or nine dollar node. Add a, uh, I saw it in the last tabs, but add a little extension there for your battery in the back. Make sure you plug your antenna in before you power up the device. And actually, that my solder, my solder drums don't look too bad on this one, actually. Pretty happy about that. The rest of them look like shit, but hey, like I say, they work. Um, so uh, that's it. Hopefully I answered a lot of questions. Let's power one up here. I, I make my own 18650 batteries and with a, with a BMS inside them. You can actually see the BMS here somewhere. There it is. See the kind of outline of it. Um, but uh, let's plug one in quick. I just plugged it in. There we go. And there it is. Now, one thing is different than the V3, it's not going to fit in the same case if you're using a screen. Because the V3, you can see how that's on there. I just soldered it through. Um, but the V3, uh, the actual screen is like shifted off to the side. This is over top of the, of the LoRa chip. Um, so uh, I'm going to design a, an enclosure and 3D print an enclosure for it that actually has the right location for the uh, the screen to poke through. Um, so you can see it. So that's on my list to do. But uh, this will last. I mean, I had this on for, I don't know, two weeks and the battery went up. I mean, well, about, I guess not two weeks. Week and a half I had on with uh, 318, 650 um, batteries. Um, and the uh, battery was like still 80%. Now, when you do do this, though, when you do these R1 and R2 resistors in this value, you have to adjust the SDC. Um, so it's a charging part um, it basically, it basically, it, it makes sure your voltages are correct because the resistor values when you change them. Um, if you don't fi fix the SDC in the Mastastic firmware, well, actually, it's not even firmware, it's just a software setting. If you don't change those settings, your battery voltage won't read correctly. So you just go in there and tweak it. And there's actually instructions on how to do that. But if I need to get into that, I, I can do it. But I figured this is more important for anybody else. Um, so that's it, guys. Good luck building.